What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike to the channel. Oh, we got we got kickoff, baby. We got blast off. Mm. What you're seeing behind me, not like physically behind me, but up on the screen up there, is the beautiful platform known as Underdog Fantasy. What pick I got? What pick I got? Why am I not in this? Oh, I am in this one eight. Imagine doing an Avi. Imagine taking doing one of these little profile pictures and uh, and not choosing a fat bulldog. What a huge, huge mistake by everyone in here besides me and Raptor and Rooney. So shout out to Raptor Rooney. Everyone else, peasant, coward. Okay, so you guys joined this this video. You guys clicked on the video. Do you say you join it? You don't join a video, I guess. It's not a group thing. It's my fucking thing. You guys are just here to hang out. So thank you for hanging out with me today. We're doing a, uh, a mock draft, if you want to say, on the underdog platform. Okay, so... For those of y'all unfamiliar with Underdog, it is actually a best ball platform. And what best ball means is you're only doing the fun part of fantasy, which is drafting. Okay. You don't have to do any in season moves. You don't have to do any waiver wire moves, which is why this is the most enjoyable, the most fun place to do these drafts because it gets you prepped for the for the actual draft season. You put a little bit of money on the line, three dollars to get into these drafts. And of course, if you finish top three, you actually win money bike. Um but you don't have to actually take care of the teams. So you could just do like 140 drafts, not have to do anything during the season and then come back at the end of the season and boom, collect your money. So I love best ball. So I love underdog fantasy. The way best ball works is they're starting rosters. This first of all, this is a 12 team, half PPR. The starting rosters are one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers and one tight end. And then uh, I believe there's one flex as well. You draft a big team because there's no in-season moves. There's no trades. There's no waiver wire. You draft about 18 players. So it's going to be uh, 18 rounds, 32nd pick. And uh, you draft a big team. And then they start the, the, the best players at each position, right? So if you're starting two running backs, if you draft five or six of them, it'll start the two best each week. And then the total points at the end of the year, whoever has the best starting lineups throughout the 16 weeks, most points, you'll win your money that way. All right, we're almost up. We have six. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy because we're starting off early, right? And I love that there's rookies in here as well. So we'll get to get a little rookie talk. And I think it's the best time to do best ball drafts because you get a ton of value from the rookie position. Now, here's what we're looking at. We thought that running backs would get a little bit devalued. Wow, there's there's already just no value on the board left. Do we take – this is what happens when I draft with my fucking audience. They just do everything I do. And it's annoying and it makes me sad. I'm here for Zeke at the 1-8, to be honest with you. I'm not mad about this. Do I hate Zeke at the 1-8? Are you guys going to hate it? Am I going to get a whole lot of shit in the comments? Yeah, but I don't have a lot of time. Here's the thing. When I do these best ball drafts, I got 30 seconds to pick, but I have to talk to you guys and keep you guys entertained and hopefully give you valuable information throughout them. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Eight running backs off the board. So we had a, a year last year where everyone came into the season being like, oh, we're going to go with running backs heavy. Early, often, and early and often again. So the first two, three rounds were littered with running backs. What happens? Wide receivers take over. All the running backs bust in the first round. And this year, everyone's back to running back. This is where I thought there was going to be. I think when you play at home with friends and family, this is going to be a year to absolutely dominate on the running back spectrum. Again, we're going to have bounce backs. We're going to have a lot of elite players back at the position. C-Mac, obviously. Bike, Saquon, bike. Um, Nick Chubb's going to be bike. Zeke, bike. Cam Akers all the way at the 110. So... Zeke, I think is going to be fine. Dak's going to be back on the field. If you look at what Zeke did over the first four or five weeks of the season, he was on pace to be, you know, the RB4, RB3 on the season. And uh, he looked every bit of that top five RB when he came back onto the field. We're not talking about dynasty here, so don't worry about his long-term outlook. They paid him, they're paying him $18 million a year, whatever it is, that absurd contract. He just got that, guys. He didn't get that three years ago where they have no loyalty to him. They want him to be the workhorse. I get that Tony Pollard looked great. As soon as Zeke was back out there healthy, who was the guy? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Answer the goddamn question. That's right. It was Zeke. So ideally, you're not taking Zeke at the 108. But ideally, you fucks will stop taking seven running backs before I get to make my pick at 108. It's quite disrespectful. So a few interesting things. We have our first running back, Devontae Adams, go off at 109. Oh, shit. I'm about to be on the clock. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I still want to go with running backs early. I still want to hammer the running backs early because there's just there's always just going to be fantastic value at the wide receiver position. I mean, look at all these guys available. Cortland Sutton, it's criminal at pick 70. Oh, nice pick, Greggy boy. Nice 
Nice pick, my Greggy boy. So this is where best ball gets really fun because you can nail value early or you could you could fuck things up a little bit. So we got Aaron Jones sitting here um, available to 2-5. What happens to Aaron Jones? Does he get re-signed? Let's look around a little bit. I'm probably going to take a wide receiver. Uh, maybe it's, Actually, I kind of like Antonio Gibson here. Might be a little bit early, but I do like the idea of just grabbing a workhorse. So we'll go to A. a Gibson here, and then we're going to hammer wide receivers. And again, I'm like talking to you, so don't worry about the team. Kind of listen to what I'm saying in these drafts. So we had uh, Cam Akers at the 110, which is insane. That's so fucking early. But I guess based on the touches that he got down the stretch the last five, six games of the season, he was a 20 to 25 touch guy. You have to assume that's you know what they want. That's what they that's what they drafted him to be. And uh, I think that's that might be what we get going forward. Travis Kelsey, do we do we finally get first round tight end here? Do we find is this finally the year we get first round Travis Kelsey? I won't be using a pick. I won't be using an early round pick on Travis Kelsey, especially in a best ball format where you get to draft multiple ones and you don't have to decide which one to start each week. So while there's so much inconsistency for tight ends on a week to week basis, best ball, you know, they play the best one. So I'm, I think it's a little bit worse value to grab a guy like Kelsey really early on. You had Diggs, the second wide receiver off the board in the first round, DeAndre Swift. People are underdog is so sharp. Their ADP is so, 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 so sharp, which is why I feel like it's really, really good practice for people. Because what happened is, is this company kicked off like last year and basically they partnered up with um, people like I, I, I am, I'm way wildly hesitant to include myself because I'm not sharp. And honestly, like I love you guys, but if you listen to me, you're also not sharp. So they partnered up with, you know, all the big dudes like Establish the Run and, and those kind of players and all all the, the first people, the first hundreds and thousands of people playing on this platform are uh, are from those audiences. So it's really, really tuned in people to fantasy. Therefore, there's not a lot of value to be had in the drafts, but they give you the most accurate practice to it. So back to the whole best ball platform on here, they have fast drafts, obviously like this, where it's 30 seconds a pick. They also have slow drafts. So if you want to jump in like three or four of them at the same time, and they're a few hours in between the picks. So you don't actually have to have your eye on the pick, but it'll give you a notification. Once you're on the clock, then you can make your pick and wait a couple hours for the next pick in a different draft or whatever. So it's nice. Sometimes I just fire up like three or four slow drafts and have them going in the background. So you're not like, you know, you're not freaking out when you're on the clock like me. All right. Um, also, if you want to download the app, there's going to be a link right down below. It's going to be a link right down below. It's going to be a first thing in the description and it'll be the first thing pinned in the comment section. That link will take you directly to the app store, whether you're in Google or whether you're on iOS, it'll take you directly to the app store. You click that, it'll download it. You can come play with me. Uh, when you throw some money down there, something that would be wildly appreciated by myself. If you find the information valuable, if you want to come draft with me, uh, when you deposit, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever you, whatever you decide the financial credit, you know, if you hit fucking GME hard, you got a lot of money to throw down. Maybe you throw 50 or 100 spot. If, uh, if, if you got into GME after they already left the moon and they're coming back down to earth, Maybe you just want to throw a 10 spot in there. When you do, though, they've got a little slot. As soon as you deposit where it says like referral or promo code or some shit, just throw a BDG in there so they know that you came from me. I, I would I would much appreciate that. So the first and second round are still riddled with running backs. We had Dobbins, Eckler, Gibson at the 2, 3, 4, 5. Kittle at the 2, 6. That's early. I'm, I don't know if I'd go with Kittle there. I'd still pro I'm, I'm just not a guy that wants to use a, an early round tight end pick uh, almost ever. Sorry, let me just check out who's on the board. Like Darren Wall in the third round is just a, is just is just something I'm not even close to willing to even fucking consider at this point. So we've got two running backs, but to be honest with you, I kind of want to just hammer another running back because here's the thing: like once the next round of running backs go off the board, you're looking at like Jeffrey Wilson's and you're looking at Damian Harris and like that. It, it's so ugly. So I'm probably going to take my top three running backs right now: James Robinson or, or Joe Mixon. It's close. I'm going to go with Joe Mixon right now. I'm going to be doing a lot of these, so I'm going to be diversifying the revenue. If you end up doing a lot of best ball drafts, if you end up doing a lot of these, which once you get on these, their app is flawless. This is on the desktop. They are available on the desktop. They're available on the app as well, mobile app. Uh, the mobile app is fucking beautiful. Shout out to David who designs most of the app, I believe. The app is is, is gorgeous, and it's flawless, and uh, it makes me do like 700 of these drafts, and I diversify a lot. Like if I know if I take Joe Mixon there a lot, next draft I'll probably do James Robinson. Now, a lot of people are worried about James Robinson, and I talked about it on the Q and Assault Saturday video that we do. It's kind of like a mailbag with you guys. It's more dynasty focused, but people asked me if I was worried about James Robinson. And as someone who, you know, runs a business a little bit to a lesser extent than the Jacksonville Jaguars, yes, they're a multi-billion dollar company, but listen, we're going to fucking be there soon too, 
Right? Don't count us out. Don't fucking count us out. Just don't look at my taxes. James Robinson, I look at it this way. You're a business owner, right? The owners of these teams are business guys, right? When they look at their players, their players are assets. They're filling in holes in which their business either has a weakness or it has a strength or whatever, and they need to be upgrading year over year. In the same way that I'm like looking at my microphones, or I'm looking at my lighting, or I'm looking at my camera, or I'm looking at my audience, do I need to upgrade my camera this year? If I have James Robinson, who is fucking awesome, all right, I'm going to use this analogy a lot throughout the offseason. James Robinson is basically like, for your business, hiring a community college kid. And he performed as well in his first year on the job as a kid out of Harvard. But for some reason, you're just going to waste resources the following year on hiring a kid out of Harvard who's going to be more expensive, just in the hopes that he performs as well as this community college kid. Just because he doesn't have the same piece of paper to his name you want to fix a problem that isn't there, right? Don't solve problems that aren't there. That is why I'm looking at James Robinson. If you're the owner of the uh, of the Jaguars, do you think you're you think it's worthwhile to plug holes on your team that don't need to be plugged? James Robinson is one of the bright spots of this offense. Why waste resources when there are so many other spots on your offense that need it? Okay, it's ridiculous. It's rude. Disrespectful to me. Disrespectful to Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy. James. So this is where it gets fun because rookies rookies are in here, but we don't know obviously where their NFL draft spot is. This is what I'm talking about with the value at wide receivers. This is why I went three running backs off the rip. Because the running backs that are left all pretty much stink. At least from a fantasy perspective. The wide receivers that are still on the board now. Chris Godwin, C.D. Lamb, Robert Woods, Julio. Julio Jones, man, just getting wildly disrespected. You guys remember how good fucking Julio Jones was before he pulled his hamstring? He pulled his hamstring. He didn't tear his fucking hamstring. What's wrong with you? He's going to be bike next year. You guys are out of control. You guys are fucking out of control. Let's look at his stat line, actually. Julio Jones, FF. Obviously got hurt. I get he's old. I get it. I get it. Even in the games, he got... Goes nine for one fifty-seven. Yeah, a couple down games, not the best. Eight for one thirty-seven. Eight for ninety-seven. Seven for one thirty-seven. Then he starts getting hurt with the hamstring, and he starts getting in and out of the lineup. When he's healthy, and he will be healthy, it was a fucking hamstring pull. He's going to be fine. He's going to be this year's Adam Thielen, where I go back and I tell you it was a minor injury that tweaked his all of his per game numbers. He's going to be fully recovered. Yes, he's old, but this is not an injury that will hamper you for the entire year for a full year on a calendar. And Julio Jones is going to be one of the best value picks in fantasy football this year. I don't care that he's old. And you might say, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who's been telling you to fade A.J. Green for years. I'm the guy that tells you to fade these older players coming off of injuries for years. Those guys are coming off of significant injuries. Guys who are trying to get back in their prime off of significant injuries, different than the hamstring pull kind of thing, okay? So when you look at A.J. Green, he was coming off of serious, serious foot surgery, which lingered into the following year. Todd Gurley, the knee is, a, is an arth arth arthritic thing. Okay, these are much more serious injuries that I tell you guys to fade. So don't be fucking throwing the AJ Green comments down below, being like, "Yeah, hey, you did it with AJ Green." I was fucking spot on for that. So listen to me here. Travis Etienne, four nine. I like the chance of taking advantage of rookies, even though again the ADPs are so sharp now on underdog that it's kind of hard to do it. But I think we have a good idea of one college production profiles. To their athletic profiles, so we can get a good idea of where their draft capital will be, and based on that, what their value will be. Right, like Javante Williams will probably be one of the top three running backs off the board in the NFL draft. <clears throat> so typically, like in the early best ball season, he's someone you can get in like the ninth, tenth round, which I think is a value because as soon as he gets picked in the second round of the NFL draft, his he shoots up to like a fifth, sixth round pick in, in best ball. If that makes sense. I'm probably going to invest so much capital into these second-year wide receivers now. CeeDee Lamb, T. Higgins. Like, the, the wide receivers that you can get in the fifth, sixth, seventh round right now, I really am not in on Thielen. I think, I think Justin Jefferson just absolutely destroys Thielen statistically this year. Uh, like, Brandon Ayuk, Chase Claypool in the fifth, sixth round, I think is fucking unbelievable value. Cortland Sutton just getting wildly disrespected. He's already he's been back jogging. He's like good to go. For, he's going to be good to go from the ACL tear and, and legit has like top six, seven fantasy wide receiver upside. So I'm going to grab as much Cortland Sutton as I humanly possibly can before this video drops in these drafts because I'm sure that's going to push it up like half of a fucking round. I also like 
should have meant that sarcastically, but I said it in a way that wasn't sarcastic as if I have so much push on this ADP data, which I don't at all. Maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If Cortland Sutton starts shooting up boards, then I'm going to start fucking shooting up. That also didn't make sense. Don't listen to anything I say. So we're seeing quarterbacks go off. Actually, I didn't see where the other ones went off the board. Let's see what running backs are still there. So AJ Dillon goes at 5-5. That's an interesting one as well because that's something you could roll the dice on. That's why I like these best ball drafts because if you do roll the dice and you hit, you hit in such a huge value way. Like if Aaron Jones leaves, AJ Dillon's going to be an immediate, you know, third round pick, maybe even second round pick depending on the hype and stuff around him. I also think Miles Gaskin is in a very similar situation to James Robinson, but of course you get him at like a two, three round discount. I think Miles Gaskin was really, really good last year, and Miami has shown the propensity that no matter who is the running back there, they obviously want to use a, a workhorse in that role. Um, but I'm not drafting a running back right now because we need wide receivers. Uh, we'll go with Claypool for now. I, f- I feel pretty confident with Claypool there. I probably should have went with uh, Kenny Galladay, but again, I wasn't really fucking paying attention, unfortunately. Kenny Galladay, obviously, we don't know where he's going to land. Um, if he's back with Detroit, I think he's a fine fifth round fifth round pick uh, with Jared Goff there, but he might end up in a shitty situation. Like, I don't know, he could end up in New York. He could end up with a with a worse quarterback than Stafford and not be a great pick. So Kenny Galladay, the, most of these wide receivers, I'm a little bit reluctant to, to draft early in the free agent process. So the first quarterback went off the board. Let's see. Patrick Mahomes went off at 311. Josh Allen at 4'5". Lamar Jackson at 5'. Man, Lamar Jackson at 5'1 just seems like screaming fucking value. I'm all in on a Lamar Jackson bounce back fantasy year. Like, he was really good down the stretch. I think he's going to return, like, maybe not, you know, that MVP type caliber season. But statistically, I don't think he's going to be that far off. I think in the fifth round, Lamar Jackson is a screaming, screaming value right now. Man, I hope. All right, so lock it. Yeah, that's that's DK Metcalf's team. DJ Chark is interesting. I do think they either draft or sign a free agent wide receiver. I think they do the same thing with the tight end. I think they might sign a free agent tight end. Um, and then DJ Chark is just kind of a disappointing season overall. It's all baked into a six round ADP, of course. So he's exciting. He's someone I'll, I'll dabble with a little bit. Juju, I think he's his his value is nowhere to go but down leaving Pittsburgh. Odell, no. See, Odell is another guy who's like twenty nine. He's coming off a serious injury, so he's a guy that I will not be participating in. Me and Odell will not be having fun together in 2021. Cortland Sutton, yes. Will Fuller suspended a couple of games? Keep that in mind. Uh, that's too early. That's too early. I know rookie rookie wide receivers produce, but they're fun to they're okay to draft when you get them at value, not when you got to use a fifth round eighty fucking redraft pick on them. I love Debo Samuel so much. Marquise is fine. The way he finished was absolutely dynamite. Brandon Cooks, unbelievably uh, undervalued right now in best ball. Because here, here's the way I look at it. Like, there's a very good chance that both Will um, Will Fuller leaves and Deshaun Watson is the starting quarterback there in Houston. And if that's the case, Brandon Cooks is the number one there. You know what I'm saying? Tight ends. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too ready to jump on them. I mean, obviously, T.J. Hawkinson seems like he's a tier above everybody right here, but his upside. I don't know if it's there in fantasy to warrant a a six-round pick right now. Probably someone I'm a little bit more comfortable in, like the seventh, eighth round, especially with the new quarterback. Okay, so there goes Chark. Nice. So I'm going to take Sutton here, man. I'm going to take as much sixth-round, seventh-round Sutton as I could possibly get in these drafts. Who else do we like at running back? I probably won't look at quarterback until later in the drafts. And then depending on, you know, again, the team makeup, I I believe it's 18 rounds. So I'll usually go, since you start three wide receivers and only two running backs, I'll probably go like six running backs, seven wide receivers, and then I'll split the difference between tight ends and quarterbacks depending on the strength that I have at the top of the position. Let's see. Sean Watson, screaming value. Jalen Hurts, ridiculous value. I think Tannehill is a really, really good value as well. So those are the three quarterbacks I'd be looking at. Um, anyone with rushing upside. Jalen Hurts is, uh, listen, if Carson Wentz is gone, Jalen Hurts is 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 going to be probably the best value pick at quarterback in fantasy this year. It doesn't matter if you think he's a good thrower or not. He he's rushing the ball. Let me see what his numbers look like. And again, y'all, if you want to draft with me, if you want to draft with me, 
if you just want to draft on here with anybody and, and get some practice and just have some fun, I'm telling you, these things are so addictive. Once you start, they're just like, it's like a social media app. You're just like, yep, but you're also getting fucking knowledge for fantasy and you're, you're getting to see all the trends of players moving up and moving down at ADP. And when we talk about shit, you'll be like, yeah, I know, I know what the fuck they're talking about. Again, the link will be right down below. First thing in the description, first thing in the uh, pinned comment section down below. Click that, it'll take you right to the app store. And if you, if you do deposit some money on there, you you can you can draft in, in leagues that are anywhere three dollars five dollars ten dollars I want to say they go up to like five hundred or a thousand dollars you can do the slow you can do the fast and they have a bunch of other sports too so if you play baseball if you play basketball um, they have everything on here and they have a lot of uh, really cool in season products which we will you know talk about when fucking actual season rolls around in about twenty four months Jalen hurts like. 18 for 106, 11 for 63 and a touchdown, 9 for 69, 8 for 34 and two touchdowns. Like his floor, even on a shitty passing day, his floor is is so, so high. He's going to be one of the best picks at, at quarterback in fantasy this year if you're getting him in the 7th, 8th round. It's absurd. Sorry for eating chips. I don't even know if you guys can hear this, but I've like barely eaten anything today. It's like 6 o'clock on a Saturday night. Yeah, I know, Nick. I'm a fucking loser. I get it. Six o'clock on Saturday night. I'm here doing best ball drafts, eating fucking chips. I'm gonna get a drink actually after this pick. We're gonna drink together. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, go grab a fucking drink. And don't say no. Just do it. Right, still got a lot of guys on my list that I want to take here. I'll probably, I'll probably forego the quarterback because I can definitely get Ryan Tannehill in the eighth, where I might not be able to get some of these wide receivers. What are the running backs to be like? We don't like Raheem Mostert. They re-signed Jeffrey Wilson, so I'd rather have Jeffrey Wilson at value. Um, I think I like Marquise Brown, man. He was balling towards the end of the year, even though they're they're almost definitely going to take a wide receiver in the first round. Maybe Rashad Bateman. Maybe they sign a Marvin Jones. Maybe they sign an Allen Robinson or something. Uh, we'll go with Debo. I think he's my favorite actual player on the list here. Okay. Um, be right back. I got a Bud Light. I know. I know. Nick, you're a fucking loser again. I get it. I get it. Stop bullying me. It's not my fault. I have no friends. And I have a skinny wiener. Finicky Flounder was good. Um, Okay, so Remo, sir, they're, they, they have their running back core coming back and probably will add something in the free agency. Kenyon Drake is a free agent right now. Who knows if they sign him back in Arizona, so I don't want to check take a chance there. Chase Edmonds seems like an actual really good value pick right now. Cause if Kenyon Drake does leave, they've, they've shown a propensity to allow him to, to get a lot of touches, not saying he will be the guy. I don't think they let Kenyon Drake walk. And then just like, yep, Chase Edmonds, you're getting a feature role, but they've had no problem giving it to him. So if he ends up being the one, a to a one B, there is a chance that he gets, you know, 15 to 17 touches a game. And that's going to be some big money in that offense. So Chase, I think is a, a very good value. Jeffrey Wilson. See, this is the this is the thing that stinks. Like normally Jeffrey Wilson in this situation where everyone's going to draft for him most at first, Jeffrey Wilson would be like a great value pick. He should be going in like the 10th, 11th, 12th round. He's not. Damian Harris, I think is a good value pick. Zach, here's the thing with these sophomore running backs, man. All the good ones, I think that that we could have expected to break out did. I think the ones like the CHs, the Zach Mosses, the ones that disappointed are kind of just that. I think they're just going to be disappointments for the most part. Let's see, Kenny Gainwell. Eh, I'm not. I'm not really too privy to him. He, he's great, fantastic athlete, great pass catcher out of Memphis. If you haven't watched any tape on him, he had a 2,000 yard from scrimmage season two years ago. He opted out for COVID this year. Um, rookie, basically was the reason that. Um, ah, damn, took fucking Damian Harris. Nice pick. Ah, Jalen Hurts still on the board. I'm gonna grab Jalen Hurts here. Basically, was still the reason that Antonio Gibson was not the the running back because Kenny Gainwell rushed for 1,400 yards. He is undersized and he's a fantastic pass catcher and I'm, I'm, I'm not as high in him as a runner. So I feel like he's going to need to go to an offense that's going to utilize a pass catching running back. That's a rookie. And I feel like that's a lot to ask for, for fantasy. 
Tony Pollard, Chuba Hubbard. I'm not a fan of him. James Conner's a free agent. I am Hines stinks. Trey Sermon, flash in the pan. Gus Edwards. Yeah, see, there's this is why we go running back early, man, because there's just so many question marks down here. JD McKissick, I think, is probably underrated, though. I already took Gibson, so I'm kind of shooting for upside here. I don't want to double double down on there. Rashad Penny, he's not someone I want to draft that early either. Um, I understand that Chris Carson might be gone and Chris and Rashad Penny might get the starting job, but that's just like Rashad Penny's floor is what he's been doing for the last three years, and that's basically zero, and it's not what I'm looking for down here. I think Philip Lindsay makes a lot of sense down here. Yeah, I don't know why we're all the way down here right now, but still a lot of good wide receivers on the board. What tight ends we got? No fan. I really like Logan Thomas. I think he's I think he's still such a fucking value in drafts this year. No fans fine. Dallas Goddard. I think Zach Ertz is might still be in play. I don't I don't really know actually, but I mean he's still under contract, but every year we hear rumors of Zach Ertz probably moving or leaving or getting his ass kicked out of uh Philly. Someone's gonna fucking move him, but never takers. Never takers. So it might just be another year of oh, we hope Dallas Goddard gets the roll. Logan Thomas feels a lot like last year's Darren Waller. Definitely not as good or as as athletic or as big of a playmaker, but he feels a lot like. Let me move myself here. He feels a lot like Darren Waller, where people are just going to write him off because he he was just, that was such a fucking ridiculous argument last year. I have with so many people who are like Darren Waller was just he was the only guy that did it there. All of his numbers were based off volume. When you look at every efficiency metric, and he was just off the charts. Uh, Logan Thomas feels like a guy I actually have to look a little bit deeper into the efficiency metrics for Logan Thomas and see if he was purely a volume guy because I I do feel like a lot of his games he catch a lot of balls but he didn't do a lot with it I always thought um, Darren Waller was the opposite of that he was always like a fucking animal no matter the volume but Logan Thomas feels like if he was an efficient tight end I'm going to be very very high on him this year as a value pick just the athletic the athletic measurables are just off the charts Slot snaps, number one. Routes run among tight end, number one. So those are all volume ta- uh, volume stats. We want to look at uh, Yak is good, number six. We want to look at efficiency. Mm, yards per reception, yards per target, yards per route run. So, yeah, this is this is not great. This is not great. This seems like a volume play on Logan Thomas. Not a guy that I'm going to necessarily avoid. But last year, when Darren Waller was you know, really high on all these statistics where it was like receiving yards, air yards, targets. He was really high rated against tight ends. And people are like, hey, they're going to add more weapons. And they drafted rookies. Those numbers will come down. But when you look at the efficiency metrics, he was like top three in yards per reception, yards per target, yards per outrun, uh, catch rate, tr- like all those things he was really, really high on. So that told me that he was actually a really good tight end on the field. And even if his volume goes down, he could still be a beast because he um, gets it done efficiently. So even if volume goes down, but Logan Thomas, it seems like he was kind of just like a catch and that was really what he did. And I, I think Washington will add uh, some kind of playmakers to the offense this year outside of Terry and they have Gibson, they have JD McKissick. So Logan Thomas, now that I'm looking at it, you know, that was just live on air analysis of me falling in and out of love with Logan Thomas, which should never be something that happens in your life. And Rooney just took him. Rooney, I'll give you a, I'll give you a pass because you, uh, you got a fat bulldog as your Abby. What kind of wide receivers we like in over here? Oh, I love Rashad Bateman. Should I just double up on my second quarterback right here and then be done with it? I think I kind of want to do that. What are the quarterbacks we have at value down there? Uh, there are a lot of good ones. Now nah, we're just going to take it. Cause other- oh, no. Cause otherwise, we're just going to time out. Oh, yes. So I'm going to probably do one of these best ball drafts every week, like one a week. And if you follow me along, if, if that's the case, that's going to be like – you know, it's going to be like 25 drafts throughout the summer. I I panic on these drafts. I'm actually about as calm as I've ever been during one of these drafts right now. I'm not really sure why that's the case. I think I'm just fighting seasonal depression right now. And it's um and it's taken a lot of the energy out of out of out of me. Also, we're like doing seven pieces of content a week now, and that's just so so much. It's just so so much. Um, so that also takes a lot of energy out of me. I'm not really depressed, guys. I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, like everybody's depressed. Therefore, like I'm not actually depressed. If, if, if it's just relative to everybody else, like we're all anxious and depressed, right? Right? Right, guys? Right? Tell me, tell me you're all depressed too, please. I'm going to start making some bad choices right now, actually. 
I'm gonna text someone I shouldn't text. Fuck it. Fuck it. Wow, AJ Brown fell all the way at nine twelve. No, Nick, that's Antonio Brown. I fucking I know, I know. Antonio Brown. Uh, Antonio Brown. I knew I shouldn't have sent that text. Fuck, it's gonna fuck with my focus now. Um. Tony Brown's a free agent. That uh, most of that Tampa Bay offense is a free agent. Is or are free agents. Brady's good for two years. Evans is locked up. Fournette is a free agent. Antonio Brown's a free agent. Chris Godwin's a free agent. Rob Gronkowski's a free agent. I would be surprised if they don't run that shit bike. Oh, I'm on the clock, huh? Quite rude. Quite rude of underdog. To surprise me like that. We don't have a tight end. <sighs> Let's see. Mike Kosicki. I don't hate Mike Kosicki, really. Like, I hated him last year, but, like, I don't I don't think he's that bad of a player. Irv Smith kind of intrigues me if Kyle Rudolph's done. I kind of I, – I'm going with Rashad Bateman here, man. If, if you haven't seen my video on Rashad Bateman yet, I'm, like, all in on him. I really think he's this year's Justin Jefferson. I really, really do. Um – he is just so crisp on his routes. He is so, he is just so good. He's just so good. It's uncoverable. I don't know if I'll go that far, but he's, he's really, really fucking good. I was going to go with Darnell Mooney. I don't know what that QB situation is going to be like in Chicago. Um, what else we got here? I got to start putting some players in the, in the queue, in the draft queue. Now we're seeing a little bit of a quarterback run. This is about where they go off. So I'm kind of happy I got Hurts and Tannehill. I think I, I love both of them. I think they have good, really good floors with the rushing. And then we, I mean, we saw like 40 point games out of Tannehill. I think we'll see the same out of, I mean, I think we saw that out of Jalen Hurts too. So that, those are the guys I'll be attacking mid to late rounds at the quarterback position. No point in wasting picks on guys that don't run the ball, you know, Baker Mayfield, Matt Ryan, uh, when you have now a good 10 to 12 guys that provide a really good rushing floor. Uh, even a guy like Justin Fields as a rookie is going to come in and probably rush for, you know, 500, 600 yards, a couple touchdowns. Uh, running backs, I'm, again, I'm glad I went early on them. You got Zeke, Antonio Gibson, Joe Mixon. I probably need to grab a couple of them now. Wide receivers, we got Julio, Claypool, Sutton, Debo, Rashad Bateman. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking how the team's stacking up so far. Let me know what y'all think. How many rounds we got? We do have 18. Good Lord. Good Lord. Loaded load. I'm so glad these fast drafts are not like two minutes per pick. 30 seconds per pick is just beautiful. They go quick. No matter what, no matter how, what kind of nut you're looking to bust, man. Quick, slow. You want to give that tender loving. You can do the slow drafts. You just want to fucking get in, bust out. And happy Valentine's Day to y'all. Congratulations to everybody fucking right now while I'm talking about fucking. Shout out to you. Not to me, though. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I actually got Valentine's Day plans. Proud of myself. First Valentine's Day plan I got in like maybe like two years. So I guess it's not really that long if you're single. Last time I had a Valentine last two Valentine's days ago, I went uh I went to one of those like paint and sip things with Steve. So Steve and Heather and then me and the girl I was seeing at the time went to one of those paint and sip things where uh it's like BYOB, you bring, you know, whatever you want to drink, wine, beer, get kind of shit face. And there's like an instructor who's a painter, you know, and you like follow her instructions and follow her lead. And, uh, and you try to paint what they paint and, uh, and everybody, uh, and you do it really bad and everybody bullies you and makes fun of you. And, uh, and that's how that goes. Is that how it went for everybody else or is it just, just me? Okay. Yeah, most people's were really good actually. My was I'm so I'm so not artistic, bro. I'm just really unartistic. I'm not sure why um I'm not sure why I subjected myself to that. And me and that girl broke up like 2 weeks after that. So not worth it. I probably paid for that shit. 
I, I do think we had some good sex that night though. So shout out, shout out me. Congrats to me for Valentine's Day two years ago. Okay. Uh, sorry. These end up being like therapy sessions for me, unfortunately. Unfortunately for you guys. Great for me. I don't have to pay. Can't afford it anyways, but all right. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. What are we doing here? Oh God. Oh God. Uh, fucking, uh, fucking yeah. Philip Lindsay. I don't know why I'm taking you right here. Did my, I already missed my pick. God mother. Ah, Curtis Samuel. I don't hate that. Curtis Samuel broke out last year. Top 25 fantasy wide receiver. Uh, is going to be moving to places probably. He's a free agent. I doubt Carolina retains him. Um, I don't know where he goes. He's another guy that, that makes me a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous. Good pick on Denzel Mims, by the way, Bigham. I think that's a great pick. I think he has a, a nice little sophomore breakout year. Um, Curtis Samuel's another guy, like I kind of explained with, uh, I don't remember who I was talking about before, to be honest, but he needs to go somewhere where the coaches use him correctly, right? Like Curtis Samuel was misused for three to four years. And then all of a sudden, Joe Brady comes in. And they're like, oh, let's use Curtis Samuel, how Curtis Samuel should be used. And then guess what? He gets Curtis Samuel type production. Now we need him to go somewhere that he's going to be used like Curtis Samuel again in order to get Curtis Samuel type production. Ah, it's a coin flip. So I think he's a little bit of a risky pick, but I don't hate him all the way down here in the 11th. He's a baller. So now I have six wide receivers. I have three running backs. I have quarter, uh, two quarterbacks. So I'm going to have to be looking at tight ends and running backs. kind of tight ends do we like here so Higby now has Higby's interesting he wasn't he was obviously a very very big disappointment this year relative to where he was getting drafted coming to the year but now you're getting him at a six round discount and uh I mean deservedly so he was actually fucking terrible for fantasy this year outside of that three touchdown game but Gerald Everett is gone Matt Stafford is coming in Things could change. I I don't think I'm going to take him over Jonah Smith or Hayden Hurst. Or, honestly, Gron Gronk is someone that this late I'm very much willing to, um, I'm very much willing to kind of roll the dice and risk him coming back for another year. I I think him and Brady run it back, man. I really think they do. Like why the fuck not? They had so much fun this year. Their team was so good. And I think they have a really good chance of winning it again. So I would probably double down on you know two of these guys, whether it's H two of Higby, Jonu, Hurst, Gronk. Hooper, Blake Jarwin's coming off the ACL. Troutman makes a little bit of sense if Jared Cook is gone. I'll go with Hayden Hurst for now. So Hayden Hurst, you know, probably another disappointing year as well. I think a lot of people, people hyped him up like way too fucking much. He never should have been hyped up to the point where he was like the six, seven tight end off the board. But if you look what Hayden Hurst did last year, I'm going to break down some fucking facts for you. So Hayden Hurst... And we're going to throw Austin Hooper up here. So if you look at their statistics, Hayden Hurst last year, 87 targets, 56 catches, 571 yards, six touchdowns. Not that not that terrible of a year fantasy-wise. Um, if you look at Austin Hooper's numbers, the year before he had that big breakout in Atlanta, 88 targets, 71 catches, 664. 88, 71, 664. Last year, Hayden Hurst, 87, 56, 571, 6. So very, very similar numbers. He averaged 10.2 yards per reception as opposed to uh, Austin Hooper's 9.3 that year. So the next logical step in that equation, if we expect anywhere near a little bit of a, a bump up in Hayden Hurst numbers, could be similar to what we saw in Austin Hooper's breakout year. So, yes, Hayden Hurst was disappointing, but I don't think he should be off your radars. The one concern is now with their cutter out, they're probably not going to be a 70% passing team, which they've been for like the last like four years. But that's kind of an overall concern for everybody. Now they took two Atlanta pass catchers. It probably would have made sense to grab a Matt Ryan because we like to stack in best ball. How are we doing so far? How shitty is this video? Let me know if you like these videos, to be honest. Like, I kind of like making them just because I get to just fucking spew for an hour straight. They're tough. I'm not going to lie. It's tough to talk for an hour straight on just things that just make no sense. I, I was clearly haven't done a ton of research on the 2021 draft class, but, uh, or, the you know, just the 2021 fantasy football in general. So I can't just be spitting facts all day, but like come July, I could just rip off 
an unbelievable statistics for an hour straight and like i shoot out of it at the end i'm like Arr! i just like blacked out i'm like how did i just say all that those things it's fucking out of control all right after uh hayden hearst goes off the board actually i, I think i could put the draft board up somehow so you guys could see it yeah you can word let me uh move myself a little bit to the top right corner So you can see the draft board. I probably should have just done this from the rip, huh? Sorry, y'all. So here are the first seven rounds. I'll leave these up for about... 15. I'm actually going to take a little, a little tinkle. What else we got going on? Oh, it's my pick. God, shit. Uh, what do I need? What do I need? Get out. No, no. Uh, I need another tight end. I need, another run. I need a fucking run a bike. Uh, yeah, I should have put people in the fucking queue. Yeah, we're going to take Todd Gurley. Fucking psych. Uh, bro, like, I'm fucking Philip Lindsay, man. I don't understand the disrespect he's getting. I, I do get it. He's coming off an injured year, but like he's going to get signed somewhere and he's going to play the one B role again. If, if not being, I think he's a restricted free agent. I think he can get resigned with Denver. If that's the case, they have no fucking faith in Royce Freeman. So he's going to by default be their number two again. Love Philip Lindsay in the 13th round right now. I'm on one right now. All right, let's throw uh Damian Williams. I think is going to fucking end up stealing CH's job, but still a little risque. His floor is just not returning to football. So we're not actually going to take him. Devin Singletary, I, I mean, he's got a chance of still being the the one A one B there in Buffalo. They'll probably grab a running back, though. Todd Gurley, no. Throw Henderson, no. Davis Murray, no. No, 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 no. <coughs> this interesting, uh, th this duo in Pittsburgh is wildly interesting to me. If you guys follow me last year, you know I'm a really big fan of Anthony McFarland. Uh, James Conner is a free agent. I think they really like this duo. I really do. I, I think they have a lot of faith in Benny Snell being like a, maybe not an every down back, but a guy who can carry the ball 15 plus times a game. And I think McFarland, I think McFarland was great in his very limited opportunity last year, but hopefully coming into a sophomore year, he can get some more play time. Um, I know everyone's going to want them to invest into like a Najee Harris and maybe it happens, but I think there's a, as good of a chance, if not a better chance that they don't really do anything at the running back position. Uh, that's noticeable. Maybe they take a, you know, a day three guy, maybe they sign some kind of under the radar, like free agent. But I, I think there's a good chance that they have Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland kind of run that backfield. So I'm, I'm interested in kind of swapping if I'm doing a bunch of drafts, you know, taking one after the other in, in the 14th, 15th round. I probably don't even have to do it that high. It's probably like 15th, 16th round. Nelson Aguilar, T.Y. Hilton, Russell Gage. What else do we like here? I'll probably go back to tight end. Ah, uh, Gronk's already picked, huh? She. See, I don't, I don't like taking these types of guys. Damian Williams, the Todd Gurley's one. Like Todd Gurley is zero, literally zero upside, and his floor is zero. He might be out of league this year. Ooh, nice fucking snag on Snell. Uh, since he took Snell, I, I kind of might, I might just take McFarland here. See, but that, that's the other thing is like Mc, taking McFarland here is uh. It's a little bit risky when Devin Singletary's on the board. Like, if you had to bet who's going to get more volume this year, it's almost definitely Singletary. Jamal Williams is interesting, too, just because he's a pretty good player, but he's a free agent, and there could be a thousand different landing spots for him. We'll go with Singletary here. I don't hate it. Where did Gronko off the board? 13-6. All right, sounds about right. I really think if Gronk comes back next year, he's going to be like a top six, seven tight end again. I know OJ Howard's going to be coming back from the ACL, but he's coming back from an ACL. 
He'll be about a year removed from it. I think he tore it in week one last year. But who the fuck's counting? Literally me. Oh, what's cracking? What's cracking? 14th round. Oh, if you're enjoying the video, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you do the brand a favor and download the Underdog app, of course. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new because, again, we're doing seven pieces of content daily. Uh, if you want to break up from the fantasy or sports and you're like, fuck this noise, we've got the Why You Yelling podcast. New episode comes out every Sunday. So, actually, um, it's the same exact time this dropped. So, as soon as you're done with this, go listen to the Why You Yelling podcast that, uh, only in podcast form. Only audio. So, if you don't want to stare at my face anymore, which is completely warranted, go to the podcast uh, app and type in Why You Yelling. W-H-Y, then the letter U, and then yelling. And you'll see uh, Drake screaming at Rihanna. That's the cover image for it. Also be linked down below. Um, but you can go follow Underdog Fantasy as well. They have different like promos that they run and stuff. So if you're, you know, you do sign up and and sometimes I give away like free bonuses or free, you know, drafts to, to, to jump in and play with. Um, they'll announce that stuff on Twitter. So you can go to, let me pull them up right quick. Underdog. So I've got like six software things running right now that are going to absolutely kill my speed on this computer. Underdog Fantasy right here. Yeah. So just go follow them. They're doing their thing. And if you really, if you like have any suggestions, one, you could, you could tweet at me or DM me or whatever, or hit me up on discord. Uh, you could also just annoy the shit out of Nick at the Nick Rudman communication so you get to yell at him and he gets to pass it on to his team he's who i yell at to tell him to fucking get a share url link nicholas what did snacks snacks put something dumb here i just saw <sighs> random thoughts i do 25 to life for a return to met life and hear the hell's bells before kickoff it's fucking dramatic snacks will be able to go to games next year i've seen every adam sandler movie and not one of them are below a 3.5 out of 5 he's that good he has literally put out one good movie in the last like seven years what the, why can't i think of the, the movie that he just put out with like kevin garnett in it the gems hidden gems is that it hidden gem i think i'm making that up let me say adam sandler gem gem uncut gems fuck it's hidden gems how the fuck would you show me something if I can't have it? That was my my Kevin Garnett impression. Did you guys get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Oh, shit, it's my turn. Um, Yeah, here's where we're going to grab Anthony McFarland. We'll roll up with six running backs. We got six running backs, six wide receivers, one tight end. Probably should have grabbed the tight end there. Let me see, let's see what the late round tight ends look like right now. Higby, eh. Jarwin's coming back from the ACL. Iran is widely disappointing. Might have a new quarterback this year. Troutman, I think, is is the most interesting like upside breakout guy down here. Knox, Knox was okay actually. Knox won snacks some money. He actually fucking played worse this year, huh? His stats went down surprisingly. Chris Herndon, huh, that was a fun experiment last year. Oh, man, everyone stinks, huh? Donald Parham, I guess if uh, if Hunter Henry leaves, he's a free agent too. Harrison Bryant, I really like. Everyone else stinks, huh? Probably should have taken a tight end there. Hang. What else is Snacks? But LeBron and Peyton are the two most overrated athletes. I feel like Snacks writes this exact tweet like once every six months. Once every six months. Gosh, I forgot we were uh, recording. Sorry. I was just scrolling down Twitter aimlessly. Oh, we've got the uh, the behind the business of fantasy football kicking off tomorrow. Tomorrow. So you guys are watching this probably Sunday, Monday. If you're watching it Monday, then today it kicked off. First interview was uh, with Andy Holloway of the you may you may have heard of him. You may have also heard of the fantasy footballers. They're, you know, this small time shop, this small time pizzeria at the corner store. It's uh, Domino's. Yeah, Andy Holloway and the fantasy footballers. You might have heard of him. Uh, we just talk business and marketing within the space and shit. And I just, I just kick some flavor in his ear on why his business stinks and how much better it could be doing. Oh, they took Adam Troutman, Alex, Alec, Alecus, JM, you, you sandbagging son of a bitch. You're actually a long time sub. I, I, I've seen that name like very uh, so many times. So I love you, but you're just a sandbagging son of a bitch. How did Zach Ertz do this year statistically? Holy shit, he was bad. 
Yeah, we're just gonna do that. Man, I'm uh this was I shouldn't have waited this long to oh we timed out. Oh we timed we fucking took Nelson Aguilar on a Saturday night. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. I'm sorry if I just ripped through your fucking eardrum if you're listening on the podcast. If you are, I would really appreciate a fucking rating and review. You guys are selfish peasants and cowards for not I'm sorry. I'm going off the rails. What do we got? Lynn Bowden? Nope. Kadarius Tony. He's gonna be a fun one. He's gonna be a fun bust, Greggy boy. Yeah, sixteenth round, that's fine. Darius Tony's gonna be oh no. What did I do? What did I do? Darius Tony's his kid out of Florida. Literally didn't do anything until his senior year in Florida. Uh he waited till every player left in order for him to break out. And then uh and then he put on a show this year. This dude is the most elusive guy, Kadarius Tony, I'm talking about at University of Florida. He's uh projected to be I've seen him mocked as high as in the first round, like the 21st pick overall to Colts or some shit. I, I don't know if he makes the first round. I don't think he fucking should. He's going to be probably going to be a bust. But he is so fucking elusive. Like, you got to you gotta put a fucking knee brace on just to watch this guy play. He, he actually tore a dude's ACL one time. He tore He fucking juked him so hard that the Florida State player tore his fucking ACL. He goes, like, parallel to the ground. His, his leg, one leg goes parallel to the ground. It's like a protractor. Protractor Tony. Kadarius Protractor Tony is what we're going to call him from now on. Out of control. Really fun to watch. I just don't think he's going to be a great pro prospect. He's just like wildly late breakout age. Tiny dominator rating. It's like everything you look for in someone that's going to get way overhyped. And I know a lot of you guys are like, have you ever watched him fucking play? Like I just fucking talked about how I watched him play, y'all. Like I've watched his film and I understand how fun he is to watch. And I just fucking regurgitate that for you. Oh my God. You guys drive me fucking crazy. And literally no one even said anything. I got problems, man. I got real problems. Mostly there's only small chips left in the bag. That's my biggest problem. Are small chips even better than no chips? You know when you're going through the bag and you're like halfway to like two-thirds done? And like all the chips, you can't find one big chip? I've almost wished that the bag just ran out after big chips. Just like each chip I eat that's small just gets me more and more triggered. I'm like, why are you even in? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You should hit the weight room before you got into the bag of chips, you bitch. I'm not on drugs right now, by the way. I swear. I would never do them before a video. Depending on what video. All right, what do we need? What do we need? Who do we need? We need a tight end. I forgot about that. We're going to fucking time out and take Nelson Aguilar's fucking younger brother. Harrison Bryant. Eh. Eh. Dawson Knox. Eh. Was he hurt? I feel like he was hurt. I feel like he was hurt. And that's why he, his numbers are so bad. Dawson Knox, how many games you played? 11? 11? 11? In this economy, you play 11 fucking games? Chris Herndon. Dalton Schultz. Gerald Everett. OJ Howard. Oh, my God. It's so bad. Who do I take? Like, I should know someone to take, but there's literally nobody. Just literally nobody. Everybody's hurt. Everyone tore their ACL last year. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm. I'm oh, I guess we gotta go with Dawson Knox. Shout out to Snacks. Snacks won a lot of money on Dawson Knox. What do you want me to say? He's gonna win me a lot of money in best ball this year by not fucking taking him. Who do we got? Late round guys. All right, we're off the tight end bandwagon. I'm. I my tight end position is just gonna put up zero points this year. Huh? Shit. I'm probably gonna have to go to the third. Like this is what I mean by I split the difference in quarterback and tight end. Right when I get down to this point, I'm like, okay, there's two and two. Which one do I do a third one for? Nah, you do the fucking math. Jalen Hurts and Ryan Tannehill or Hayden Hurst and Dawson Knox. We're going to take a third tight end to shore that position up. And that is not shored up whatsoever. It's like putting fucking scotch tape on an earthquake. I like the team otherwise. I, I hate that. I, I don't really like the early round running backs that I have, to be honest. Like, I like that I went running back early and I have Zeke Gibson Mixon, but, like, none of them are at value. All of them are at shit value. Like, I should have better players at each of those picks. Like, the fact that I had to take Gibson at 2-5, we all love Gibson. A great rookie year, but, like, I still think McKissick's going to be very involved. I don't know if they ever give him, like, a full three-down roll. Guy played, like, 48% of the snaps this year. I actually want to look that up. This is a, a good site that you can get snap counts and stuff for free. Lineups.com, NFL snap counts. 
They give you the fucking business. Regular season. Running bikes. Team. Washington. Antonio Gibson. Team snap percentage. 39%. Wait, what year is this? Why the fuck is Lamar Miller and Peyton Barber on here? What is happening? What is happening? Okay, maybe they don't have the updated shits. Maybe I'm lying. Oh, I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock. We're going to have to go with another tight end. Uh, is there anybody? Is there anybody home? Raise your hand if you want me to draft you. I'm going to go with Anthony Fersker just because I respect him. I just like really respect his name. No, I'm not going to. He's had one touchdown in each of the last three years. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It took A.J. Green. It took fucking A.J. Green? I feel like the underdog is watching me, and they're... And they're like plugging in players they know will get me angry to make better content for them. Because better content means more eyes on the content. More eyes on the content means more players on their platform. More players on their platform means just better. But their stonks are going to go through the roof. More stonks going through the roof is better for me. Because I own some stonks. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, long-winded way of saying fuck AJ Green. That was just a bad pick. All right, all right. Well, the final team is this. Jalen Hurts, Ryan Tannehill, a quarterback. Zeke, Gibson, Mixon, Lindsey, Singletary, McFarland, at running back, Julio, Claypool, Sutton, Debo, Rashad Bateman, Curtis Samuel, Nelson Aguilar, A.J. Green, wide receiver. Don't take nine wide receivers like myself. Hayden Hurst, Dawson Knox, tight end. Yeah, that'll be the reason I absolutely don't finish in the top three. But here's what here's what we're going to do, guys. All right, I'm going to be posting multiple times a week on these. I'm going to be opening up a bunch of these best ball drafts. I'll send the picture of which draft to join in if you're on underdog. Uh, so again, just click the link. It's the first thing in the description. It's the first thing pinned in the comment section. Uh, when you you know throw some money in there, you can throw BDGE in the per, uh, in the referral in the promo code box, and uh, that'll that'll get you in there. And, uh, and then you could draft for me. You could just you know send me a picture, either email, Instagram, DM, or on Twitter or some shit, and, and I'll send you the invite for these drafts. So I hope that wasn't like the worst video of all time, even though I really that was. These, these usually go off the rails, but that one felt like extra extra off the rails. Like I was not in a train anymore. I was in a sp fucking spaceship off the rails, sort of. Again, not high, not on drugs. Just have a massive fucking brain. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow.